Okay, Hi. Hi, ladies. This is Sharon Jackson, Program Director for the Women to Women National Conversations Tour. Thank you so much for attending our Let's Talk About It. It's all about the face series. A few, a few housekeeping issues that we need to discuss. This is audio only. Throughout the presentation, if you have a question, please submit it in the chat box and we will do our best to answer all of your questions. Just a brief reminder that this broadcast will appear on our website, which is w2w, the number two, wtour.com, as well as all of our social media handles. So if we're ready to get started, I'd like to introduce Sarah Chamberlain. She's the president and founder of the Women to Women National Conversations Tour. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sharon. I, before we get started, I want to thank Sharon and thank Cecilia for all her work uh, or all their work in putting this together. We're really excited to have um, all of you listening today. So I want to tell you a little bit about Women to Women um, before we get started. Many of you I know that are on, I've had the absolute pleasure of meeting. But the Woman to Woman is a national conversations tour. It travels the country engaging women in candid and frank conversations about issues that are important to them. We have had everything um, on these podcasts or these webinars from um, PPP questions. Next week, we're having one on personal finance. But we thought today we'd do something a little different and a little bit of fun. Um, so before we get started, you know, we're, we're thrilled to have you all. We're hoping to get it back on a uh, tour by this fall, uh, God willing, and uh, be able to get out there and meet those of you who are on that we haven't had the opportunity to meet. But our motto here in Woman to Women is you tell us, we tell Washington. Your voices are represented here in D.C., told to both the uh, Republicans and the Democrats about what your issues are. But today, as I said, we're going to have some fun. I am very, very pleased and honored to introduce a very special and dear friend of mine. Um, he has been a celebrity stylist to just about everyone you know. He's been seen on the sets of Today Show, The View, CBS Morning, Harper's Bazaar. He does a lot of the women who are in Harper's Bazaar. He's just really amazing. And he's done people he can't even tell us about that he's done, but he is the king at this. So we are thrilled to have him with us today, doing this, talking about kind of the dramatic eye, since we're all wearing masks now when we're out and answering your questions. So without further ado, I'm gonna hand it over to my very dear friend, Steve Rice, who is in New York in his apartment and doing this. We are thrilled to have you, Steve, so thank you. Thank you so very much, Sarah. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm, I'm very uh, thrilled to be here for you all. Uh, Sarah came to me and said, hey, I have an idea. You know, we're all trapped to some degree. Uh, I, I find that a lot of my friends and I included tend to have a little bit more dry skin than usual because we're uh, trapped in our apartments and we're not getting as much, much oxygen and we're not uh, exercising as much. But I recommend that you try and move as much as possible. Do a little bit of yoga, you know, do a little bit of jumping jack, anything to get your oxygen flowing. And one of the great things that I'd like to uh, recommend, it's very simple. What you could do is you could just take a bowl of water, sit it next to your bed at night, and I'll just create a little bit more moisture in the air. I also like the idea of having a little bit of aromatherapy. And so you get a little bit of moisture with that and some soothing scents. I like the uh, lavender. And then I also like the tea tree, which is very, very good. Helps to relax you to get you where you need to be because we're having also sleeping patterns I know that are off so those wonderful things are great just just simple when you wake up in the morning have tons of water you want to hydrate 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 as much as possible one of the great things that I do is I have a nice big glass of water in the morning you know a several I always have a bit of green tea which I highly recommend it's very very good to keep you, you definitely with the antioxidants. And also, it's good for your blood circulation. And also, again, if you just drink lots of tea, that too will keep you hydrated, always. Highly recommend that. I 
kind of decided that what I want to do is I want to talk about a lot of masks. A lot, we, we're going to talk about some that are home remedy, and we're going to talk about some that are on the market. The home remedy, I like simple. Take an avocado in half. You mash it, put a little bit of honey, and then put a little bit of olive oil. Mix it together, put it on your face, leave for 15 minutes at most. 20 you could go for if you just want a little bit more hydration. And what that'll do, the honey is very good for sealing the moisture in. So you'll be very happy with that. You'll take, which I love these, birds bees, can't beat them. Towelettes, grapefruit, get them. You'll take the excess off and then you'll take the birds bees and you'll take one of the towelettes and just finish removing the rest of the product. Also, if you have extra, leave on the side, you can make avocado toast, all right? So that's a really great one to start out with. If you're having like flaky skin, I highly recommend taking honeycomb. Honeycomb with a little bit of oatmeal, put a little bit again, uh, olive oil, mix that together and just slightly exfoliate the skin Leave it on for about 15 minutes. That'll assure you get some of that dead flakiness that we tend to get by sitting in these apartments on quarantine. Take that off. You wanna hydrate as much as possible. What I like to do is I like to take a little bit of toning, toner. I mean, we all have toners just sitting around. So if you have one of these little bottles, you just put your toner in and then you'll just mist, all right? That's gonna get you to the beginning of, before we put any type of eye makeup on, any type of foundation, any type of anything. One of the great things that you can do is the Shiseido. The Shiseido has these eye pads. They're really great, because they really hydrate, they take away any creping, any uh, puffiness, which is great. But if you don't have access to this, you can always take cucumbers. Cucumbers are the best. They will take down any type of inflammation. You know, you'll just have, you want to keep them cool in the refrigerator. And then when you wake up in the morning, you know, you, you do all your hydrating, you're drinking your tea, your yoga, your movements, all the things that are going to keep the blood flow going and also keep you hydrated. The wonderful thing about what's going on now is there's tons of masks. This particular one is for anyone who's vegan. All of these will be on my Facebook page. So if you go to Stephen Rice Hair and Makeup, you'll find all of these on so that you can go ahead onto Amazon and order them. This particular one is great because it's a lemon extract and honey. And it also helps if you're having a slight bit of breakout. That's a great one if you're vegan. This is a wonderful mask. It's charcoal and honey. It's an exfoliating mask and it's incredible because what it does, it pulls out all the impurities. If you're someone like me, you just want to be hydrated all the time. This pearl mask out of Korea is absolutely wonderful. This particular one has vitamin E and it's extremely hydrating. You'll find when you take it off, it's immediately plump and moist. And if you really want to treat yourself, do the caviar mask. It is an incredible mask. Again, you want to just be hydrated. You want to plump your skin. The collagen just gives you that fresh, dewy look, especially when you go on for your Zoom, because we're all like stuck here now in front of our computers. Um, these are a few things that I like in terms of uh, mask and hydration. Uh, but I would also like to say nutrition is extremely important. Taking vitamin C, an orange, a grapefruit, anything that has lots of vitamin C. Always an avocado, as I mentioned before, you can take half of it and you can make avocado toast that's good, that's the oils that are really good for you. These are good oils. So these are the things that I would say that I would most certainly start. They're simple, they're easy, and once again, they're gonna keep you hydrated. So you look great when you're going camera. All right, so here we are. And what I want to do is I want to talk about, you know, going on and having something simple, you know, as far as makeup. The one thing we want to do is we want to make sure, 
after we've hydrated, after we've done all the things that we do, that we absolutely do the minimum. You don't need to do a lot of makeup at this time. So taking this face, very clean, probably is a little bit uh, bright right now, but nonetheless. And what you wanna do is you wanna always make sure that you fill the whole eye, top to bottom, under the brow, with concealer, whatever your concealer color is. You, could, you do both sides. You put concealer on here, here, from lash all the way across. You fill the whole area, the whole lid and brow bone, both sides. You wanna take a little bit of concealer. You wanna also take, it's a little bit bright, but you wanna take a little bit and you wanna put on the nose on the nose, just conceal, conceal, conceal. Okay, I'm gonna conceal everything. After you conceal, you want to take a dark, darker color, whatever that is, a taupe, a brown, whatever it is, and you want to work from in, from out, word in, outward in, okay? outward in. You want to take that color and you want to actually take it all the way across, leaving, I'll just show you. You want to take the color, you want to leave, you want to go all the way in and you want to go down the nose, okay? Both sides. And that just kind of contours you a little bit. And then you'll blend it in, then you'll blend it in. And then what you'll do is you'll take a lighter color. Here's the palette here. It's a simple palette. I have it also for someone who has a little bit more of a pigmentation uh, and they're both, one's a cream, one's a powder. I tend to like creams because again, cream is going to allow you that dewy, fresh, and you don't have to really worry about looking too oily if, on your camera. So what you want to do is you want to just take a little bit of that, of the and then you want to blend it all together. You want to then take possibly, if you want, a little bit of powder and you want to seal. You want to seal everything in, what you want to do. You want to take the powder and you just want to seal everything in. All right, that's what you want to do, okay? Then I would take, a liner. This liner, it's again, it's on my Facebook page. It's a great liner because it's very thin at the end. So you can go, you can do a wing or you can just do very close to the lash line. During the day, I would, I would highly recommend staying close to the lash line. You don't really want to do a wing. We're not going to a party. We're sitting in front. We're doing business. So you just want to do a slight bit just to fill in your lash line on both sides. And because it's so thin, you can barely take a little bit here and here. And then you want to use your finger to smudge, smudge the rest inward. Not smudge down, but smudge upward and make it clean. Should you make a mistake, the great news is we have these great Q-tips. They're pointed on one end and they're beveled on the other side. So what you wanna do, if you should make a mistake, you take a little bit of concealer and you just clean everything up. Just clean it all up. And then you blend the concealer or the foundation, whatever you've used to smooth it all back out, okay? I highly recommend sponges. These are the small sponges I got at Wayne, Dwayne Reed, uh, CVS, wherever they all have them. And then what you want to do is you want to take those and you just want to blend everything together. Very simple. Take, I love these. This is a double extend. What it does is it has a filler on one end. So if you're afraid of eyelashes, then this right here will plump up your lashes. Then you go, 
and you darken after it dries, okay? So it gives the illusion that your lashes are longer and thicker than usual. But for those of you who aren't afraid, I highly recommend this. These are a lifesaver and I will put them on my website. I'm sorry, they're a little bit bright here, but nonetheless, I'll put these on my on my Facebook page so that you can find, find them. You can get them very easily once again. They, they sell them at CVS and they sell them at uh, all the drugstores for the most part. And if not, you can order them for from uh, Amazon. What I like about these is they come in different lengths. They come in short, they come in, it's a trio. They come in medium and they come in long. Well, if we were going out, I'd say wear the long. But since you're sitting in front of the computer, I probably would suggest the short. And how they come, they're, they're in sections. So you just take one and then you put a little bit of glue which is great. We have uh, the glue, okay. And then we put a little bit of glue on the ends and then you just add it to your top lash. You just add it to the top of your lash. I'll show you. I won't put it on, but I'll give you an idea, okay? Uh, let's see here. What you would do is you would add it to this part of the lash. All right, that would be after you've already applied the mascara. And then afterwards, what you could do is you could go ahead and put a little bit more just to blend. A little bit of powder, a little lip gloss, a little bit of uh, pencil, whichever you prefer. And I think you're ready for Zoom. It doesn't need to be dramatic, it just needs to be clean. And that's the whole idea. You just want a clean face for Zoom, just all even and hydrated. I think that's probably uh, one of the best things you can do for yourself. It's just something very clean, not so dramatic. And that's what uh, I, I would recommend so far. I do have some other remedies uh, if you have questions. Do we have questions? Yes, we do have some questions. Um, our first question, let me see as I filter through them. Uh, we already talked about homemade mask recipes. That was fantastic. Um, if we are easing up on the makeup while at home, what is the one makeup accent that all women should wear when on a Zoom call or when going out with their masks on? I think once again, what we talked about, I think the most uh, incredible thing that you can do, especially with the mask, are your eyes. You know, again, if you're going out, you can pump them up a little bit more. But as I said, you know, with um, being in front of the camera, you don't really need to wear a lot of makeup. But if you go out, you just add a little bit more mascara. And you can also add a little bit more, say, liner, you know, not wing again, like I said, it's daytime. But just a little bit more, you can take, you know, navy or you can take a purple, depending on the eye color. Uh, you could take, you could, you know, more my skin tone, you could take an orange and blend that with like a taupe or a brown, which would be really pretty for you. But always make sure you, you do a highlight underneath. It just gives you a little bit more of an open eye. Don't do too much dark because then it makes your eyes smaller. Not unless you already have big eyes. Then what it does is it tends to bring them down. So I would say your eyes are most important. Um, with everyone wearing masks, are we skipping lipstick with the masks or are, um, is lipstick still important during this time? Um, I think, you know, you should always keep your lips hydrated. Always. You don't necessarily have to do um, lipstick, but, you know, take some petroleum. They have wonderful petroleums now. These, this particular one is a creme brulee. Oops. This is a creme brulee. They also have strawberry. They have different, different uh, flavors, different scents. And you can just keep them hydrated with a little bit of Vaseline. And it's kind of satisfying having that little bit of a scent. And then also what's great too is before you go to bed, you can do a little bit of a scrub on your lips, especially if you're, you're a little bit more dry. Do like a little bit of like an oatmeal scrub, you know, with honey and oatmeal, put it on, let it sit. Kind of like scrub it off, you know, hydrate, a little bit of Vaseline, that'd be great. Also, I like the idea of mixing the Vaseline with a little bit of olive oil for me, just to give it a little bit more uh, moisture uh, right before. And then of course, dab it 
and then put a little bit more of this, then go to bed. I think that is the key to keeping your lips supple, especially during this time. Oh, wonderful. Our next question, what are your opinion on magnetic eyelashes? I like a magnetic eyelash. I like an eyelash in general. I think eyelashes are the one accessory. It's like putting a gray curtain in a window. I, I, I really am a fan of that. But I will say, it's, there's so many easier ways than the magnetic now. As I mentioned to you before, and it will be on the Facebook page, there are those lashes that you come, you know, again, that come in sections, and they're great. They're great. They make it easy for you. But the magnetic, if you can't, if you can't do the glue, the magnetic is fine. They just simply go on, they grab, just make sure that they're even. Um, awesome. We have some people asking opinions for your um, opinion about shea butter for moisturizing. Shea butter. Oh, God. It's God's gift. Yeah, shea butter is a wonderful thing. Shea butter and petroleum. Petroleum for your feet, shea butter for the rest of your body. It's good for the hair. It's good for the scalp. It depends on what type of hair you have. If you have curly hair especially, it's great. It's great for this, hydrating the scalp. It's great for your elbows, your knees. Anyone can use shea butter. Obviously, there's some that are, you know, are a little bit um, more hydrate, hydrating than others in terms of they do light shea butter and then they do a heavy shea butter, depending on the dryness of your skin. Uh, but overall, shea butter is a really incredible gift to us. Um, how do we keep the shine down when on Zoom calls? The shine. The shine, I do understand that. If you are someone who normally is shiny, you don't want to uh, look more shiny. I understand that. Again, they have this, these wonderful powders. This one in particular is from Makeup Forever. It's Makeup Forever, and this is the HD powder. It's especially designed for camera. It's especially designed for television. It's a high definition, and what it does is it absorbs the light, and so it gives you a very even Look, but you have to be careful with this particular one. If you don't blend it down, you'll look like you just had a fight in the uh, flower factory. So you have to be careful with that. It is incredible, but again, make sure you blend all the way down when you use it. It'll take away the shine, and you won't look like you had a flower fight. All right? Awesome. Um, are there different moisturizing tips for women of color? Um, well, I, I would say anyone who needs moisturizing, um, it will be the same, you know, skin is skin. I will say that some people uh, break out a little bit more. Some people, uh, you know, can get uh, scarring or things would uh, cause pigmentation. But uh, any type of natural remedy, I would say olive oil is my friend. Olive oil is our friend. You eat it, you know, have it on a salad, you have it, you know, mixed in with your avocado on the toast, as I said. And for me, I like a rice cake. So a whole wheat rice cake with a little bit of that on. And then what you can do is you can just take some that you reserve for yourself, put it in the bathroom or wherever you get dressed. After you shower, just lather in olive oil. If you don't like things that have um, preservatives, things that have additives, sometimes they put over put fragrance, which also has alcohol, you know, always look toward shea butters, uh, avocados, uh, not necessarily just to leave on, but just as a, as a remedy to hydrate. But more importantly, olive oil, it goes a long way. I'm telling you, you can cook with it, you can eat it, you can put it on your body, and you can do a lot of things with that, all right? Um, is there a particular color of lipstick or blush for women of color that will present better during a video conference in the professional setting? I think typically what happens is because women of color come in so many varied shades, I always say go for what looks natural. Go look, go with, with what looks natural with your skin tone, peaches, uh, plums, depending on the, the depth of your tone, uh, things, browns, toasts, depending on the shading that you are. Whatever it is, don't look, don't make it look as though you're going out, you know, dancing. You really are being professional. So anything that looks natural, just to give a little bit more, uh, of a, you know, a little bit of color to your to, to your presentation, but not necessarily something that's going to make you um, stand.
stand out in terms of your lips. I think also it's very important that when you're doing Zoom that you possibly do uh, something that's a little bit more matte, less shiny, not as glossy, as glossy. So, I mean, I think that's the idea. Do something that looks as natural as possible along with the idea of it not being something that's going to be distracting. I mean, after all, when you're doing Zoom, the whole idea is, what you know, it's a meeting, it's professional, unless, you know, it's a Zoom with a cocktail later on. Fantastic. Um, if you traditionally get your eyebrows waxed, is it better to pluck or shave your eyebrows during this time at home? You know, I, you know, I've done it all. I mean, not on myself, but in terms of clients. When I was a young kid, I, I used to do the shaving. I was very good at that. But the thing about shaving is you, it, it comes in, it's just very prickly when it comes in. If you can take plucking and you, and, you, and you do it well, what I would suggest that you do is you take masking tape, you cut it out, and you make the shape that you want. Masking tape, because it's not gonna adhere to the hair so, so uh, aggressively. Put the masking tape in the shape that you want and then just pluck what is not within the shape of the masking tape. Because it's very easy to get lost and you'll pluck way too much. Better to have a shield, a masking tape uh, that will protect you from over plucking. Because basically you just want to get rid of the extra hairs anyway. You really don't want to create a new look. You'll let that happen with your person that normally does it. Um, do you have any tips for covering up roots when we can't get them colored during this time? <laughs> many, many tips for covering up roots. You can use powder, the same powder that you use uh, to create your eyebrow. You can use a little bit of, that was another thing. You should also do your eyebrows when you uh, do your makeup as well. I love this particular one. It's great. It's from Makeup Forever. Uh, it's liquid and it's waterproof. So if you take a little bit of this and you do your brows, you can also pull your hair and just do your roots, especially on your face. There are also things that you can order if you don't want to be that primitive in terms of uh, the application, is they have these wonderful ones from Orbe. I love these. They come in different colors. I just happen to have the brown, the red, and you know I have a little bit of salt. So sometimes I use that to just brighten it on the days when it looks a little dull and I don't feel like washing it. But in any case, these are great. You take these and you just lift the hair and you spray and it goes directly on. And the wonderful thing about these, they do not come off on your sheets. That you don't have to worry about. So I would recommend going on uh, Amazon and looking for the Orbe or Orbe.com. I would go directly to Orbe. We have someone asking about nails. I typically do gel manicures, but now my nails are horrible. Are there any tips for fixing your nails during this time? Uh, well, I would suggest that you take that up with uh, manicures for sure. Um, I think it's very good to, with anything, whether you do hair extensions, hair nail extensions, it's always good to, at some point, allow your scalp to breathe, your nails to breathe, and you'll have a better outcome later. I think what tends to happen with gel nails, if you do them for too long, is you start to lose the density. They get thinner and sometimes fungus. Not always fungus, but sometimes thinner, and most of the time thinner. So it's also nice to take a break from it every now and then. You can put like a little uh, glue on one every now and then. Just, you know, if you feel uncomfortable, just letting it all be natural. But nonetheless, I think it's a great idea every now and then to take a break from it. Uh, the same thing with hair extensions. I'm a huge fan of them. I, I love cutting them, I love doing them, I love blowing them. The hair has to breathe, the scalp has to breathe. At some point, what ends up happening, people get addicted to these things. And what happens, you end up losing a lot of hair, uh, even with the best person doing it. Uh, you end up becoming very dependent if you don't take breaks from it. Um, can you spell the name of the hair color spray that you were previously talking about? I sure can. It's Orbe. That's Orbe, which is O-R-I-B-E. O-R-I-B-E. And they have a whole line 
of uh, products that are just incredible. I love their mousses. I love their shampoos. I love their conditioner. They have shampoos, especially for silver hair, which is incredible. They have a whole line for you girls and guys, if there's some guys on, who absolutely uh, love their silver hair and hate when they go dull or when they go dingy. Uh, they have uh, wines for blondes. They have hair, uh, products that lift products, mousses that create waves, mousses that create curls. It's one of the best products on the line, I might add. Our next question is about hair. Um, I typically wash my hair every two days. I am not applying any heat or products during this time. Should I decrease my washes so my hair will not dry out? Uh, I think ultimately it's not good to wash your hair too much. The only, you know, even if you're an oily haired person, I always suggest that, you know, you wash one day if you have to do it the next day, unless you're extremely oily. I would say get tea tree oil. Tea tree oil um, products are incredible. For people who have completely oily uh, hair that just, no matter what, it's, I had a good friend. I would blow her hair out. It would look amazing at the beginning of the day. And then by the end of the day, you could cook with that grease. <laughs> but in any case, I found that when she used tea tree, she could get a few more days out of it. So, I mean, if you're that type of, if you have very overly active sebaceous glands that means someone has very oily hair then i would recommend teaching it'll help to balance it out a bit more if you're someone that just has like a normal scalp not dry i would suggest you don't really need to wash it so much you probably could wash one day if it's every two days then rinse that next time that you do and then wash the next time so that you feel clean uh if that's your reasoning but I would say never use too much detergent. Or if you do use like, say, I would get like Johnson & Johnson's baby shampoo if you just have to. But for the most part, I would say, you know, just wash one day, the next time rinse. And if you need, just put a little conditioner on the ends and really, really, really rinse. And you'll still feel very clean. If you're someone who has very dry scalp, you most certainly do not want to uh, overly wash your hair. The whole idea is you need to hydrate. You need to get that scalp, you know, balanced and 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 healed and and calm. So again, the tea tree oil is very good for that as well. It helps to balance out that scalp so you don't have the dandruff. And then there are also some great dandruff shampoos out there. We know about Head and Shoulders, but then Orbe also has a line, so you can look into that. Um, in the same vein, do you have any suggestions for extra deep for um, an extra deep conditioner for your hair during this time if you do have dry hair? Yes, I would again, just like with the skin, you know, it's like you home remedies are the best. You can take mayonnaise, you can put mayonnaise in your hair and just sit with that. You can take uh, olive oil, which is great. You can heat it up, boil it in like a little uh, sandwich bag. Don't, don't not too much because you don't want it to to break, but just enough. You can even heat it up in the uh, microwave. Just heat it a bit, do a hot oil treatment with olive oil. Let that sit on, and if you have a shower cap, put the shower cap on. Make sure you get into your scalp really, really well with both the mayonnaise or the olive oil, or you can mix them together. And if you really want to get creative, throw an avocado in there. Put it on that cap and just sit for about 20 to 30 minutes. Rinse, rinse, rinse. And then you can go as if you just use a regular conditioner. You don't really, really need to shampoo it again. You can use, a, if you feel not comfortable with that, you can use like a very mild something to just take the extra out. But for the most part, you want to keep it as hydrated as possible. And then also, again, Arbe has a wonderful uh, shea butter, uh, wonderful hydrating balm that you can use also on your scalp if you're one of those people as well that needs that extra uh, hydration. Um, for women of color, do you have a recommendation for what to do with your hair in its natural state when you are in between extensions? Yes, I would say, I would say most important, hydrate, hydrate, take care of it, don't let it uh, not, don't, don't disregard it, uh, just really, really treat it like you would a plant. Like you would a flower, give it as much love as possible. Whatever you, it needs, if it if you need if you need uh, it to be hydrated, 
then that's what you do. You find the things, you do natural remedies, you, you grab shea butters, as I said, things that are going to give back to the hair because most certainly it's been stressed out for a, a long time. So that's what you ultimately want to do. I would say probably every week, do a high oil treatment uh, or even twice a week, you know, just to give it back what it needs. Again, you treat the hair like you would a flower. Just coddle it, take care of it, give it what it needs. Because after all, it does come from a root. So, I mean, if you just treat it no differently. Fantastic. Um, is it true that drinking alcohol dries out your skin? Absolutely. And it will dry up your skin. It will bloat you. It will do all the things if you do too much of it that we don't want it to do. Uh, let's face it. Hydration is the key to uh, looking good, looking young, um, vitality. Uh, the suppleness of the skin. Alcohol, you can have it. You can have as much as you want, but you're going to definitely see a difference than someone who drinks a lot of tea and water. I would even say not even coffee. It would be green tea, water, herbal teas. Uh, again, having open water, sitting next to your bed, having a glass of water, drinking as much, hydrating as much. Alcohol most certainly is fun and it's wonderful. We all love it, but at the end of the day, too much of it does dry and too much of it will eventually create, you know, Botox is good for that. <laughs> um, do you have any simple hairstyle tips for Zoom for like, simple hairstyles during these virtual meetings? I would say, um, you know, depending on your hair, you know, if you are someone who has, you know, a medium length hair, you know, I, I try, try pulling it back sometimes, maybe not all of it, but, you know, try pulling a little bit back and, and having a little bit of a side bang, you know, if you're not good at blow drying it, you know, try doing a, a French twist, um, try doing, a, a, you know, a top knot, but not quite so high. It's a little bit more uh, casual when it's high, but, you know, quite somewhere between the nape and the crown. So, you know, I would try things like that, you know, and then do, when you do your eyes, it just looks a little elegant. A little bit more elegant when you pull your hair back a bit. But if you're not somebody who's comfortable with that, I would say just, you know, blow it out as much as you can and I'll add a little wave to it, you know, simple. And if, even if you don't do the back, no one's going to see it anyway. Um, my hands are suffering from all of the hand sanitizer and hand washing. Is there a home remedy to address the hand dryness? Yes, there is. I would, some of the gloves that we all have now, what I would do is I would mix, I would mix petroleum, olive oil, and honey. Cover my hands in that very, very much so, and put the glove on, the gloves on, and sit. As I watch a movie or, you know, have a chat even on Zoom if you don't have to use your hands or, you know, while you're eating, you know, you could still work with it because you have the gloves on. But in any case, what you can do is you can sit with the, and what it's gonna do is just gonna seal all that moisture back in because it's all natural for the most, except for the petroleum, obviously. But nonetheless, it just seals the moisture back in because that's exactly what happens. The skin gets tired and it's like anything. It's like, uh, it can't hold on to the moisture anymore because it's like, you know, it's like the hair, the shafts, and typically when the hair is shiny, they're little, little doors that make up the hair. And then when it's very hydrated, those doors are closed very tight and that's why you get the shine. But when that it's very dry, it means that the doors are open. It's like a piece of wood on your deck. When you put a piece of shellac on it, then it's sealed. It's the same thing with your hands. You just need to seal the moisture back in. And that I think is a nice, easy remedy to fix that. Um, we do have a question for how can women of color with natural hair style appropriately for Zoom calls? Well, I would say with natural hair, just like with anybody, you know, just make sure you wash and condition and just make sure it's presentable. I mean, I think depending on the length, I mean, you could pull it back again if it's long enough. If it's short, then wear it nice. Just make sure that, you know, if, if, if the thing about it is we, we can't get to the hairstylist. So
So maybe the hair is a little bit out brown. You know, have you ever thought about wearing clips? Wearing clips, is clipping and creating like a new shape for the hair. I think that's a great idea. If you, if you have any old clips, clips somewhere. Even bobby pins, you know, just, just to give a nice new shape to uh, the natural hair. You know, I think that's a great idea. And if not, you can go on Amazon, you can go online, order some clips, really nice ones. Get plain ones for business and get like a little bit more sparkly when you're going out. Just because, you know, right now when we go out, we don't always want to be so casual. So get a few of those. And I think that looks really special. And with your eyes, of course. <laughs> Awesome. We have a clarification question on, is a hot oil treatment different than the mayo, olive oil, avocado mixture you mentioned? Yes, it would be because the hot oil would just be exclusively oil. It'd be like, the, like I said, it would be like the olive oil. It would be olive oil that you heat up in the, in the uh, microwave. The other one is you wouldn't want to heat up. You just want to sit with that. And that's a little bit slower acting, but it is very hydrating. Uh, but, you know, we don't always have time for that mixture. So a hot oil treatment kind of like substitutes that particular one. They're both great. And, you know, they're great for different reasons. One is going to just give you all hot oil and one is going to give you a little bit more, you know, a little bit of everything with the eggs from the mayo and then the avocado. That oil. It's, So it's a different thing, but yet it achieves pretty much the same thing. It depends on how you feel. Um, wonderful. We've talked about a whole bunch of different moisturizing options. Um, we have one attendee asking, what do you think about coconut oil as a moisturizer? I like coconut oil. I tend to think, um, to be honest with you, I tend to think it's a little bit more dry than an olive oil. Uh, so I'm, 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 I'm on the fence about the coconut, to be quite honest with you. I, I love olive oil. I think it just works for everything. And a lot of people don't take it for granted. You know, they only see it as something to cook with or to put on a salad, but you can do so many things. You can use it for your hair, your skin. And the wonderful thing about it is it doesn't have a, an, a, an aroma. And if you do like a fragrance, uh, you know, it won't disturb your Hermes or your uh, Calvin Klein or whatever it is that you wear. It does not get in the way. It doesn't have any, any it's not offensive in any way. Uh, whereas I think coconut is a great, um, remedy as well, and a lot of people are using it, but I prefer personally olive oil. It beats everything. Wonderful. We have one attendee who is praising your artwork in the background, and she would like to know that outside of a home office, what's a good backdrop in your home to use for Zoom conference calls? Well, I mean, I just think anywhere you can find some light. Um, I have um, a lot of art, and I like, uh, but I have a lot of windows. So I figured I needed to be somewhere where I can create the light because, you know, too much light, unless you're in front of the window, works. But then I have sofas and, and uh, other things that are around the window. So I just found this little spot here and I grabbed a bunch of lamps. Uh, there are some Zoom, uh, uh, there are lanterns that are lights that, they, that you can have, the rings that you can buy that are great, that'll give you great lighting, which I'll invest in. I plan on doing, the, doing that, but this, arrived much sooner than I was able to get one. So long story short, just anywhere where you feel like there's not a lot of backlighting, because then that way they can't see you. Uh, just try to have as much light in front of you. So what I did is I created this little nook here. Uh, that's my bathroom actually, and I just took one of my pieces of art and I actually hung it in front of it just so it looks a little bit better here. Uh, and that's my front door. Uh, but yeah, just anywhere where you can create uh, you know, a good uh, visual uh, so that people can see you, feel you, because if you have too much light behind you, it's disruptive or not enough light. Awesome. Thank you. Um, we do have a question. Um, how do you do eye makeup if you have eye bags or eye creases? Any tips for that? Well, I have to say um, that is a very challenging one. I mean, I have to say what, what you have to do is you really do have to make sure that if you do have bad increases, that whatever you do, just blend it. You still can wear makeup, but just blend it. Make sure it's blended. Don't do too much of it. Do just enough. Do just enough. If you have dark circles, do. Wait, there's several things you can do. They have, if you if you have um, 
uh, olive skin or pink skin, there is a green concealer that you put on. It's it's that you put on first. Then you put your tone on. So the green takes out the blue, the dark, and it balances, and then you put yours on. So then it doesn't come through. If you are of dark skin or bronze skin, there is an orange that you can use that you use for the dark circles first. Then you put your foundation over the orange and you blend it all together and you'll see it works beautifully. It's not going to make it go away because, I mean, listen, I mean, that's what the doctors are for. But what it'll do is it'll make it so that you feel more comfortable. And I think if you invest in that, and you know, what you all can do is you can ask me questions on my Facebook page too for you specifically so I can look at you and give you some ideas as well. Fantastic. We have time for about one, maybe two more questions. Um, we do have this question. If I am, I am way overdue for a Botox treatment, what do you suggest to keep my fillers fresh? Oh God, that's, that's a million dollar question. I'm waiting too. <laughs> um, I would say basically what you need to do is stay hydrated. That to me is going to be the only thing, less alcohol, more hydration. Try and sleep, get on a clock. That is gonna be the only thing that's gonna work really until you can get to it. Because you know, this is this is medicine and science. And with, without medicine and science, we have to go back to the ways we knew before we knew medicine and science. Hydrate, rest, do the things that you need to do. I, again, this is gonna be a lifesaver, the Shishado. These are wonderful. And again, they're on my Facebook page. They're going to be great to keep you from that, that craping that you get. And just drink lots of tea. Keep it by you. Keep it near you. It, marry it. When we get out of the, 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 this uh, quarantine, then if you never drink another uh, glass of tea, that's okay, but you, should, you still should. But uh, during this period, I think you really should drink as much of that as possible. Drink as much water. You know, take uh, salads with a little bit of olive oil on it to your, your mass, those sorts of things that are going to plump the collagen. Awesome. And our last question before we have Sarah, uh, thank you. Um, we have a question saying your eye contact is really good when you speak. Exactly where are you looking on your device when you are speaking? And do you have any tips for keeping yourself from looking at different places when you are on a Zoom conference call? Well, I just, I feel like, you know, this is my, I've done only one Zoom and I was up close and was with friends. They, they showed me how to like become part of the Zoom family. And then uh, Sarah came to me and said, hey, I have an idea. You know, you're stuck. Sarah's been so good to me. Sarah and Paige, uh, they've been calling me and making sure that I'm okay because we got along so well and we can't be together. So she said to me, you know what? I have an idea. So she came to me. With this idea, I've never done this before. I've done stage, I've done television, I've been, you know, filmed before, but this is different. The only thing I can recommend is just be you. Just be you. Uh, and don't be nervous about, you know, being on the camera. Just be you, because it's the only way that they can deal with you, see you, feel you at this particular moment. So just relax. Don't let the nerves get on. Don't let it. Don't work. I, I will say what helps, take a shower, wash your face, do your hair a little bit, put a little makeup on, put on a cute outfit, and that, that helps a whole lot, I will say. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, Sarah or Sharon, do you have any final comments or questions for Stephen? Uh, Steve, uh, this is Sharon, and I just like to thank you so much for participating. Uh, sure. Very informative and uh, lots of great tips. Sarah? We may have lost her, but um, again, for our participants, this will be on our website at 
the number two w tour dot com and also on all of our social media platforms and we pray that your families are safe and healthy and look out for our next topic next week it's all about your money have a great day and god bless god bless